Mike's selection is, in my opinion, extremely important. Back in the old days when equalizers weren't as sophisticated and we, did, we didn't have the tools we have now, mic selection was your main way to affect the sound that you were recording. Um, and it's still important today. And mic selection, you can read about it, you can listen to my, my tutorials, uh, but to really master it, you just have to kind of check as many microphones out as you can under as many circumstances and just remember those uh, combinations of mics and circumstances. And then you, you get a vocabulary of microphones that you can choose to when you want something to sound like this or that or this or that. Now, lead vocals, um, if it's a, if it's a, a, a female singer, I'd probably go with a, with a 251, something with a little larger diaphragm. If it's, um, if it's a, a male vocals, a lot of time I'll use the manly small condenser calibration microphone. It's, it's amazing. It's on a lot of big records. A hip hop artist, I'd probably consider maybe a, a combination of a sure SM71 and a, and a good condenser mic. I'd try to place them so there was no phase issues, maybe record them separately. And um, the reason I like that is I like the proximity effect on the SM7. It gives, it gives, uh, it gives a rapper just a, a, a great aggressive tone if you want that. Um, now, um, some singers just, just their voices just love a Sony C800. It's a very expensive microphone. There's another microphone by David Perlman called, a, um, uh, it, it, it emulates a 47, very affordable. It's under 2000. And I, 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 I personally own one. I love that microphone. Um, trying to think a rock vocal like say a um a steven tyler type rock or maybe a metal the sm the sure sm7b is would probably be my first choice for that too but for a different reason it can handle a lot of level that sort of thing now background vocals are a little bit different um because of the way we record them sometimes one singer will record 20 background vocals i like to change microphones. I don't like to just set up one microphone and record all 20 vocals. It, it, it can homogenize the sound and pasteurize it a little too smooth. So I might do the low notes with the SM7 as we got to the higher notes. I might go, go to more condenser type microphones. Um, and then if, it's a, if we're recording a group doing backgrounds, which often happens, um, you, you've got to make the choice. Do you want, do you want to use a stereo pair? like in MS mode or a bloom line pair. Um, we'll go into those techniques. And, and those I probably would choose a, a condenser microphone if it's a, a, a group of people singing backgrounds. Um, choirs are a little bit of a unique situation. I tend to mic them like I would mic strings. So when you have a, a choir, think about it. You've got a very expansive sound source. When you got one singer, you've got the sound in, in one little spot, but when you're working in a choir, the, you, that can be 20 feet wide. So um, think of it as a string section. So if you're gonna record a choir, I would use a large diaphragm uh, condenser microphone in Omni if I only had one microphone. But if I had two microphones that were the same, I would, I would think about a, an XY pair or an MS pair if I had a, microphones with, with variable patterns. Or, uh, or, or maybe a bloom line pair, or maybe just stick, just, just walk around the room with headphones on so you can hear the microphones and place one on the right side and one on the left side, and then go back in the control room and listen to what you've done. And you might have to adjust some people. So you might have to move some of the louder people back, some of the softer people forward. So, you know, it, it's always a, a science project to record choirs, and then you've got to keep them excited. You know what I'm saying? Um, a rap vocalist, I've, I've, I've recorded them on so many microphones. I, I like, uh, I, I like large diaphragm condensers more than the small diaphragm condensers. Uh, remember the small we liked on, on some female vocalists and some stuff like that. Um, a mic that comes to mind is, is a, an, uh, an 87, a Neumann 87. If you can get one that's been modded by, say, Klaus Heine or Stephen Paul, you can 
compete with six thousand dollar microphones for like three grand they're they're very very good and um don't be afraid here again to use our old buddy the sm7b which is as you know following this course is becoming like the uh, island microphone if you could have one microphone uh metal and rock singers um probably most of them are um are sm7s i would back it up with maybe a, a condenser to get as much high end as i want you can you can actually get a lot of high end out of an SM7, but you have to you have to be careful, and you have to you have to make sure that you're in a spot in the room where those frequencies aren't canceling out, because they can cancel out quite easily. So the basic tenet is to to think about some of the earlier things where we've discussed how microphones work, um, how to select um, microphones, of course, and and mix it up. So it, there's no harm in, in using um, a, a pristine signal path that you might use for a female singer on a rapper. It, it, there's no law that says that won't work. Um, and, and happy accidents are probably more prevalent than you might think. So I'm, I'm giving you guidelines. Now, don't go buy these microphones and only use them that way. But I'm telling you actual microphones so that you'll you'll get a feel for the process and the thought that goes behind them. That's the most important thing to remember.